subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. At the COP26 earlier this week, Prime Minister Narendra Modi made five new commitments to help slow down climate change with much pomp and fervor. One of these in particular made headlines everywhere. That was India's commitment to net zero emissions by 2070. Net zero emissions basically means removing and absorbing as much carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as is produced. We'll get to why this is important later. Even though the net zero target got the most media attention, experts have said that the other four targets, all for the year 2030, are actually a little more interesting when it comes to the impact they could have on climate change. The four other commitments are one, increasing non-fossil fuel energy capacity to 500 gigawatts, two, fulfilling 50% of India's energy requirements from renewable energy, three, reducing total projected carbon emissions by one billion tons, and four, reducing carbon intensity of the economy by 45%. But what do these targets mean and why are they important? This video aims to answer those questions. My name is Simran Sirur and you're watching Tipping Point. Let's get back to the net zero target everyone is making so much noise about. Earlier this year, uh, the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released a report that warned that if the world didn't remove as much carbon dioxide as it was emitting from the atmosphere by 2050, Global warming would rise 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels, leading to more extreme, frequent and intense weather events. Since 1850, before the Industrial Revolution began, temperatures have already risen by 1.1 degrees. Cutting down carbon dioxide emissions is important because they remain in the atmosphere for centuries, trapping heat and causing unnatural warming of the atmosphere. Developing countries, including India, have argued that developed countries should reach net zero sooner than 2050, since they're the ones primarily responsible for past emissions causing global warming today. Emissions are inextricably linked to economic development and growth, so developing countries have argued for more time before having to cut back on their own emissions. The US, which is the biggest historical emitter of carbon dioxide in the world, has committed to net zero emissions, but only by 2050. This makes it difficult for developing countries to commit to a date before that, without giving up on their own development and growth. Navroz Dubash, professor of climate change at the Center for Policy Research, said that India's net zero target by 2070 seemed motivated more by diplomacy than an interest to save the environment, since India was under a lot of pressure from countries like the US and the UK to commit to net zero. Apurba Mitra, head of National Climate Policy at the World Resources Institute India, said that this target would need to be assessed to see the effect it would have on global temperatures. Still, this is considered a pretty ambitious target for a developing country like India, which is also the third biggest emitter of carbon dioxide today. Moving on to the other targets. The second target to make noise is that about India fulfilling 50% of its energy requirements by 2030 from renewable energy sources. In this case, the noise isn't necessarily all praise since the government hasn't been clear about what this target means. India's energy requirements are enormous and include everything that requires fuel, from transport to cooking gas. By 2040, India's energy requirements are projected to reach the equivalent of 1,123 million tons of oil. Experts say it's more likely that the Prime Minister was referring to electricity and not energy as a whole. This goal has commonly been interpreted by experts as the government pledging to generate 50% of India's electricity through renewable energy sources like solar, wind, hydropower and nuclear plants. This is a big step since right now 70% of India's electricity comes from coal, which is a non-renewable fossil fuel. Only some 9.2% of our electricity needs were met by renewable energy sources in 2019. But this goal is still a little unclear, since in a media briefing, the Ministry of External Affairs had suggested that this goal pertained not to generation, but installed capacity from non-fossil-based energy resources, meaning 50% of its installed capacity would come from renewable energy and not necessarily the generation of electricity. We're waiting for India to formally submit these targets and the fine print 
to the UN, which is, which is when we're likely to get more clarity. Next, India said it would ramp up its non-fossil fuel capacity to 500 gigawatts by 2030. For perspective, India's electricity grid capacity is currently at 388.89 gigawatts. So what we're committing to is now much beyond that. This target is considered ambitious because there are many challenges when it comes to renewable energy sources like solar and wind. India has already built 100 gigawatts of installed capacity, but much of it is lying in disuse because solar and wind power fluctuate, making it difficult to stabilize the grid. Storing renewable energy is also extremely expensive and difficult to come by. But this goal is in line with the direction India has been moving in lately. In 2019, India had announced it would expand its installed renewable energy capacity to 450 gigawatts. The last two targets have to do with carbon reduction. India has said it will reduce carbon emissions by 1 billion tons by 2030, which makes it the first ever time that India is committing to an absolute reduction in carbon emissions. India is the third largest emitter of carbon dioxide. Last year, we emitted 2.88 billion tons of CO2, and by 2030, we're projected to emit almost double that, 3.8 to 3.9 billion tons. It isn't clear yet if the 1 billion tons will be cumulatively reduced every year from now to 2030, or if this reduction is derived from some kind of baseline emissions. The government is yet to clarify this matter. The last target, finally, is a modest one, which says India will reduce its carbon intensity of the economy by 45% by 2030. What this means is that the volume of carbon emissions per unit of GDP will come down by 45% by the time we're in 2030. This is 10% more than what India had committed in the 21st COP in 2015, which was 33 to 35% reduction in carbon intensity of the economy under 2005 levels. India is well on its way to achieving this since we've already reduced our carbon intensity of the economy by around 24% between 2015 and now. Apart from these five commitments, Modi also said that he expected $1 trillion from developed countries, which is an indication that accountability when it comes to climate change is a two-way street. This is Simran Sirur for The Print. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this.